Okay, as stated before, I want to demonstrate uh, the reasons why it's not a good idea to try to turn around in the event that your engine failed on takeoff. And so, everyone, we've always been taught in, in uh, general aviation in a small aircraft like this, if, if we're in the takeoff position and we lost an engine, let's go straight ahead because it's unsafe to make a turn back. But initially, everyone's going to have a tendency to want to turn around because you have an emergency or uh, catastrophic engine failure is going to make you want to want to go back to the airport pretty quick. So uh, what I want to do is demonstrate the reasons why. And the reasons why is it takes altitude to make a tight turn. So a high angle of attack turn, high, high bank turn with low airspeed is just a recipe for disaster. So I have this airplane configured at 68 knots, VY, one notch of flaps. I'm going to pull the throttle to idle. And I'm going to wait about three seconds for that uh, delayed response because that's what would happen in a real-life scenario if we lost our engine. And what I want to do is note that the altitude we started, and then I'm going to turn beyond 180 degrees uh, and then see how much altitude it takes. So uh, here comes 4,800 feet. I'm going to pull the throttle to idle. I'm going to wait three seconds at this altitude. My airspeed decays. I decide I, I start to make a turn. Stall horn comes on becomes dangerous. I'm going to pitch for best glide. I want to make sure I keep my ball coordinated, ball centered, stay coordination. I'm going to have to turn beyond 180 and then back because if I just made a 180, that just changed our direction. But in order to make it back to the runway, we'd have to turn more than 180. Okay. So there's the completion of my turn. I'm going to level off here so we can do the math. And it looks like it was uh, around 400 feet, around 400 feet to make a, uh, a turnaround back to the runway. That's just a demonstration to, re to, to show the reasons why you do not want to turn around. Okay, and now I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to put the airplane back into a 68 climb, one notch of flaps. And this time, I want to focus on bank angle. And so, bank angle, as I increase the bank angle, the stall speed increases. So, everyone needs to keep in mind that the stall speed is dependent on the bank angle. So, your uh, stall speeds designated from the manufacturers uh, are with wings level at gross weight on a standard day. So, we can make this airplane stall at any airspeed. And it's important to know, to recover from a stall, it's angle of attack, and it's not power. So what I'm going to do is pull the throttle to idle, let the airspeed decay at this attitude. I'm going to go into my turn. Notice the stall horn comes on. So in order to recover from this high bank stall, I just relax back pressure. That lowers the angle of attack. You notice the power did not come in there because you recover by lowering the angle of attack. So I'm going to do it one more time. Bring the nose up, loading the wing in a high bank turn. The stall horn will come on prematurely compared to a standard day at zero bank angle. And again, if I want to recover from this stall, the stall procedure, I just relax back pressure and go to a zero G. A zero-G wing will not stall. Now I want to go up. I want to put the airplane in the same exact same scenario, 68 knots. One of the leading causes of aircraft accidents is loss of control. And, and, a, and a stall spin, a stall spin uh, will result in a catastrophic ending. And so it's it, it's important, it's an imperative that everyone knows that to keep the airplane coordinated. Now I'm standing on quite a bit of right rudder at this time because I'm in a high angle of attack. I'm going to let go of the rudder. And if you'll notice, if you can see the turn coordinator at this time, the ball is swung over to the right because the torque, the P factor, is turning this airplane to the left. If you can note that the ball on the turn coordinator is swung over to the right, that means I need to apply right rudder in order to go to coordinated flight. Okay, I'm going to pitch for 68 knots. 
And again, I'm going to do another simulated engine failure with a high bank turn. This time, I'm going to underutilize the rudder. That can be underutilized one way or overutilized the other way. So basically, you need to keep the ball centered anytime you turn the airplane. So if I go into turn, and if I want to intense and push too much left rudder, then that'll cause my left wing to stall first. And when that happens, then I just have to push right rudder to stop that. But again, stall recovery is all about reducing the angle of attack, not the adding power.